Today we're hanging out with the Commander-in-Chief, the top dog, the Canon Vixia HF-S21 High Definition Camcorder. This has 64 gigabytes of an internal flash memory. It also has two SD card slots, which migrates a pro feature into a consumer body. When the internal memory overflows, it spills right onto the first memory card. And then when that memory card overflows, it spills right onto the second memory card. So there's no lapse. This camera also has a 3.5 inch 920,000 dot touchscreen LCD that actually is decent. You can record at up to 24 megabits per second, which is uh, currently the highest bit rate in the industry. And you can shoot in four different frame rates. You can shoot at 60i, which means interlace. Now it also has native 24p mode, meaning the camera records each individual frame, so there's no ghosting or visible interlacing. It's smooth, progressive, kind of like what you see in a major motion film. Now we also get 30 frames per second and a 24 frames per second. Both of those are simulated and really record 60i but they just give the appearance of 30 frames and 24 frames a second. One of the things this camera is known for is its cinema mode, which is basically a gamma light shift that can be applied. And when coupled with native 24p mode, um, the image quality is unbelievable and can pass for B-roll for a um, feature length film. The Canon HF S21 has two types of image stabilization. It has dynamic image stabilization, which corrects for vertical, movement and it also has a powered IS stabilization system which allows you to engage it with a button as you zoom in and out. We were very impressed with both forms of image stabilization however we know that Panasonic is the one to beat when it comes to image stabilization. Manual controls on the HF S21 are great. We have a programmed AE mode, a cine mode, uh, TV, which is a shutter priority mode, it allows you to adjust the shutter, and an aperture priority mode, which allows you to adjust the aperture from an f1.8 to an f8.0. We also have manual gain control on this camera. Canon also tacked on a low light mode, but what that basically does is regulates the shutter speed so that in very low lux environments, the camera will just bring the shutter all the way down to maybe a 1 6th something in that range, which basically makes the image very stuttery and kind of looks like a dream sequence. So it's it's really kind of worthless after 1 24th of a shutter. There are also a bunch of other ancillary scene modes like portrait, sports, night scene, snow, that kind of thing. It also skimps on the digital effects. So if you're expecting consumer crazy art and posterizing filters, uh, all it really has is black and white and sepia and a couple fades. In addition to a bunch of presets like tungsten and fluorescent shady things like that, the HFS21 also has manual white balance, which can be set with just one press of a button. We've got a mic level control, um, but aside from that, nothing other than a wind cut and uh, nothing too advanced. Manual focus is great because we could employ this dial here, and we could also do a touch focus. This camera also has subject tracking and face detection, which works very well. We also have some pro features like peaking, and we also have zebra stripes, which appear when a part of the picture is overexposed. The HFS21 tacks on even more exposure solutions with an auto backlight correction and auto slow shutter. Now let's talk about image quality. In native 24p coupled with cinema mode, the Canon HFS21 produced beautiful, beautiful HD video. That's where this camera shines. In program auto exposure and shooting in 60i, the image quality was still very, very good. Now, when we get into low light, we're dealing with a horse of a different color here. We saw a lot of blue noise with this camera, and when you employ cinema mode, the image is almost lost. 60i had no chance in low light, and the best we could do was 24p in programmed AE mode. The HF S21 having an 8 megapixel sensor also captures 8 megapixel stills. And we found the still images to be pretty darn impressive. We just lost a little bit of clarity in some situations. That's probably due to the auto ISO. Now about the interface. This touch screen was awesome. Love it or hate it, we couldn't get enough of it. It just made shooting so easy. The responsiveness was top notch. The speed was there, the accuracy was, t was spot on, 
and playback was very advanced thanks to the 3D view which allowed us to scroll from side to side and cycle vertically through different clips. The HF S21 has a pop-up flash and video light combination and it also has this handy custom dial here that you could attribute to focus, exposure, um, or other manual controls. We have a comfortable grip design with a protruding molded arc here that fits perfectly into our palms. We like the zoom tab because there's a lot to grab onto and there's also an extendable electronic viewfinder. The HF S21 has a 10x optical zoom and a built-in stereo mic. We also have a proprietary hot shoe on top which kind of chapped our rears because we'd like to fit our Rode video mic on here but we can't do that. Canon also finally revamped their port enclosures, making them nice and sturdy and protective. Ports and terminals on this camera consist of a component, shared AV and headphone jack, remote jack, USB and HDMI out, and a 3.5 millimeter mic jack. One thing we didn't like about this camcorder is that the battery drains faster than Jägermeister at a UFC party. You're going to have to get larger backup battery packs in order to last it through one day. Now one thing to note about the Canon Vixia HF S21 is that it records in the AVCHD codec, meaning you can't just throw your card into your computer, open up a folder, and play your files. You have to use either the included Pixella software to burn it to a DVD or Blu-ray, or you have to use a non-linear editing program like Premiere Pro or Apple Final Cut. We had very few gripes about this camera. This is one of the most advanced consumer camcorders we've seen in, a, in quite a long time. We hope Canon will stuff a back illuminated sensor, fix the battery life, and add a hot shoe that's not proprietary on the next version of the HF S21. In the meantime, if you're not sure if you want to drop 1400 bucks on this bad boy, go to the store and line it up next to the Panasonic HDC HS700, which offers a 240 gigabyte hard drive and 14 megapixel stills. This has been the Canon Vixia HF-S21. For InfoSyncWorld.com, I'm Mike Perlman.